Welcome back again, everybody. It's me, Semi Original Guy, aka Mr. Cannon from Advanced Wars by Web. Hopefully, you all are having a fantastic day. Hopefully, your Halloween was very good. I know Halloween can be a pretty hectic time for everybody. So, hopefully, you all have a lot of fun. Alright, so, back by popular demand, we have myself again in a match that I played quite recently against 4242. So, if you don't know who 4242 is, then you probably haven't been in the Global League recently. Especially, uh, you know, rated around the mid-tier somewhere, because he has been everywhere. I am seeing this guy all over the place. This is actually my third match I had against him. First one. I believe he actually managed to take the win against me in a fog match. Second one, we fought on Caustic Finale where I managed to get the win on him. And now we meet again for the third time. Yes, it's true. We meet right here on the Doom of Valhalla. Ooh. And what a map this one is. Uh, it's a very interesting, very cool design of a map. Now, this is a standard map standard map so we are gonna see some standard play very standard stuff that's for sure all right so this one uh involves you know you got your standard hqs in the middle we have a couple bases here you know start off with two bases we have a base in the middle we have an airport way down to the south and the north we got comm tower separated on an island with a port and we have a black boat now what's the usage of the black boat on this one well, depends on how you want to approach the map. Now, the black boat could be used to boost an infantry closer to the base, or it could just be used for general healing. But, uh, you know, in general, that black boat does get some use on this map, because those even those little tiny, little tiny, little heals that you can get for one HP and the refuels, quite effective. So this was a tier four matchup. So only the tier 4 CO is allowed. Uh, my opponent, 42, decided to go for Jess for this one, which is a very interesting pick. Now, as we know, Jess will get a deduction to her firepower for quite a few of her units. Now, uh, basically everything that's not a ground unit, <laughs> minus infantry. So air, navy, all going to lose 10% attack. Infantry are also going to lose 10% attack. Unfortunately, but her vehicles on a day-to-day -day basis will actually gain plus 10% firepower. And in addition to that, her super co-power, or co-power and super co-power, will boost the movement and the firepower of those vehicle units. So it can be very, 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 very effective in certain situations, for sure. Now, I think Jess is a pretty cool pick on, let's say, high funds matches because her super code power and everything will actually refuel all her units at the exact same time. So you ain't gonna be suffering from no fuel drain, you ain't gonna be suffering from losing out on ammunition. So that can make it so you won't have to necessarily get, uh, you know, a few resupplies while sitting on cities, and you don't really need APCs if you're playing with Jess. Now in high funds, for sure, Jess is super cool because you can just mega spank. <laughs> You can just mega tank spam your way to victory and they will never run out of fuel or ammo and it's super fun. Uh, but in standard, I still think she's a pretty cool pick. So got no problems with my girl Jess. However, myself, I decided to pick Adder for this one because I feel, feel like infantry, very important on this map. There are so many properties all over the place and you gotta capture them and I think the movement bonus will definitely give you an edge in the capture game, as well as some surprising, surprising attacks that your opponent might not be ready for. So, that's what I chose Adder for. As we know, no day-to-day -day abilities, but the slide slip and side winder abilities will give you plus one and plus two movements globally. All your units. So, Adder, the little snake just slipping in there. That's what he does. So, without further ado, let's go ahead and get into this match. Alright, first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to let 42 play the Penguins. I am going to play as doo -doo -doo -doo, Acid Rain, because I like Acid Rain. 
Also, another fun fact about Jess is she's probably got the coolest theme song of the entire game. Hopefully, I have it playing in the background for you guys right now. Super good. Love it. But, as we all know, we all know the deal. The first few turns, we just have our standard infantry builds. So, normally, I skip over the first few turns here. But, today, I am actually going to just go ahead and play out the first few turns here. Alright, so we played out the first few turns. No problem there. So there is one difference that my opponent here, 42-42, did that I did not. So he decided to go over here, cap this property, and actually send this infantry over to cap this city right here. Which is not a problem. Not a problem at all. As a matter of fact, when you're playing as the second player, I feel like that is actually probably the route to go because you get the second infantry. Now I myself, I've decided to use the black boat to actually ferry this infantry from this base into the black boat and in position to cap this property. So that's what I decided. Now I don't believe that anytime I ever played this map I ever actually went about this route. So I figured it'd be kind of fun to try, you know, try something new. You never know, right? Alrighty, so after that move, we are going to go ahead and skip ahead a little bit. We can see 42 has decided to buy a recon uh, early out of his uh, right side over here. So, I mean, that's uh, it's getting pretty, getting pretty spooky. Recons on this map are pretty effective because with the amount of roads, they have insane mobility. Insane mobility. They can just get everywhere. Especially a Jess recon. Huh. <laughs> huh. <laughs> Painful stuff hit by that folks painful stuff all right so i noticed right here that my opponent 42 42 he's decided to build two recons so i'm like hmm. Hmm. he's got two recons on the field so what am i going to do about that i can't have recon to recon violence right can't have it it's just not going to work out especially a jester you know it's a, it's a losing battle if you're going to go about that right so i decided to just open up with a tank right away day five got a tank build it out of this property here mostly because i see the recon coming over here already right so build it out of this property i believe my plan is to funnel it over to the right side of the map and hopefully threaten this recon here however this recon is in a pretty good position right now where it can either go into the center or it could go over here on the right side of the map Right, so it could be dangerous stuff either way. Uh, you don't really know where it's gonna go. You could end up sending your tank over here just to have the recon go into the center. So, spooky stuff. But it looks like the recon has moved all the way up here. All the way up here. So he's gonna be instantly denying me all these properties over here. And I'm like, well, that's a problem. So I'm not gonna be able to go in there. His second recon goes all the way up here and gets onto this fired silo tile. And it's already in position to interrupt. Well, not interrupt, but it's already in position to, like, attack a bunch of infantry. So it's going to get some free hits. Which is unfortunate. So, what do I do? So I got a tank over here. I immediately buy a tank on the left-hand side. So I gotta get a tank over there now. Right? Because he's got recon. And uh, recons are pretty scary tanks. <laughs> Let's be fair. You don't want to be dealing with tanks when you're a recon. But he's decided to move all the way up here, takes a shot at my infantry. And as you can see, this tank is just sh just a tile shy right now. Tile shy. And he's already going for a comm tower. And I'm like, well, ain't that something. So he's already boosting himself all the way over there. He's got the, he's got the comm tower. Right? So I'm thinking to myself, okay, like, what do I do? What do I do? Because it's not looking good already. It's day seven and it's not looking good. I'm like, oh, geez, did I like misplay like hard or something? I don't know. All right. So I send my tank down, send my other tank down. Bada bing, bada boom. Easy peasy. Now, I know I'm not going to be able to cap these. Ah! What have I done? All right, hopefully that's good. So I know I'm not going to be able to cap these properties. Like down here, in the middle. He's got too many infantry down. And he's already starting to deny me properties over here. I'm like, oh god, what is going on? Terrible stuff. 
Alright, but I know I can't let him get the Comic Tower, right? I can't let him get the Comic Tower. So I actually take the 7 HP infantry and I go up and I attack the other infantry. Now, 30% deficit right there, right? Why do I do it? Well, I gotta interrupt it. You know, you gotta put on the pressure. You can't just let them have the problem. Alright, so, I mean, dealing with, uh, just units that are like 120 over 120 and then just normal base infantry already. Or 120 over 100, so. And then normal base infantry. It's like, it's something you don't want to do. You know? Not good. Don't appreciate it. Not at all. I'm like, get out of here. Alright, build a second tank from over here. So I'm deciding to make this sort of my strong side. You know? You gotta have a strong side. You gotta have a weak side. You gotta pick, choose, sender, full send city, right down, take it out. Nothing gonna be left over. But we'll see. <laughs> We're gonna see for sure. So, 42 42 continues to cap on the comm tower. Actually, moves it to cap another property. It's already secured 12 properties so far. Now, I have secured a few more properties. Just by one. Just by one. Now, by none. Now, now we're even. He's gone ahead and built a transfer copter, too. So, this is something that you see very, very standard stuff from this map. Normally, people will like to go for the uh, the airport as soon as they can, build a transport copter, send that transport copter over here, right? All the way over there, or which way, either way, one of the ways, you gotta get it over to this island and you gotta get that comm tower. And you gotta get the port. You gotta get that firepower, because this is a two comm tower map, or four comm tower map, okay? You gotta get that firepower. All right, so I move in the tank, take the shot right here. This tank is not in range. So I do manage to interrupt that, and I believe I'm going to be able to take it out with the injured infantry that started the fight in the first place. So, that's done. Take care of it. Not going to get the comm tower, don't got to worry about it. What I do got to worry about is the amount of injured units I have now. I mean, well, not amount, but I have one, so he's injured, he's there. It's risky. Now, I do have two tanks down here now. He's only got one tank on the way. So he's not going to be able to push that tank up and be able to do tank on tank warfare. Otherwise, I'm just going to move to the other tank and take it out, right? And they're overlapped right now. So this tank's got no worries. No issues. Kichi. 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 I do go up and take an additional shot. Second shot. Good. Take another infantry down to five. But I still have that pesky recon in the center. However, this tank is actually positioned right now where it could assist right here. However, if he decides to move this recon up here onto this road, he would be able to take a shot. So, risky business. So what do I do? Build another tank. Boom. There. Easy peasy lemon squeezy. I got it all covered now. All covered. Everything is dandy. And build another tank right here. Now, we're super covered. Not a problem at all. All right, so 42-42, we are going in, capping the back line, taking out my 4 HP infantry. Sad days, it's gone. Salute to you, my friend. Salute to you. All right, gets a nice little boost with the infantry, too, from the transport boxes. Now we got an infantry that's, like, a little bit closer, you know, it's good. We still got this infantry in range to hop in here, pop its way over here. Good stuff. Now, continuing the cap right here, because now he's got this tank covering it, so if I actually do go in and attempt to attack that one more time, I'm going to get hit by a just tank from the city. Ooh, not good at all. You don't want that to happen. Alright, so Recon knows it's in danger, so it steps back. <clears throat> it's not going not gonna to be taking any more shots there. It's uh, just blocking these two properties right now, waiting for these infantry to move in. And that is about it at the moment. Now, 42 does decide to build a artillery unit over here, too. So it looks like he's going to be moving. Looks like he's going to be turning this side over here into a strong front by the looks of it. You know, we got a tank, we got an artillery. It does have two tanks over here, but I don't know. We'll see what happens. So the only difference right now is I have like a whopping five tanks on the field. 42's only got three tanks on the field. But he's got the artillery. So that's the difference between opening up with some recons rather than just opening up with some tanks too. You're going to be behind in the tank count, but the recons could be very effective in the sense that they can interrupt a lot of caps, slow down your opponent's capture. 
Because if you manage to get a funds deficit on this map in particular, it can be very, very bad for your opponent. Now, funds deficit here can be the difference between actually pumping out some medium tanks or possibly even some real tanks or something, right? All right, so I take out the infantry that was on the con tower, decide to start capping the con tower myself. Move this tank down here. So now I do have two tanks down here too. Now, if 42 wanted to attack this tank, he'd have to attack it from the road. He could attack this tank here from this three-star tile, right? But two tanks, right? It's dangerous. It's dangerous to go alone. You just need a friend sometimes. Sometimes you just need a friend, folks. All right, so a couple turns late, but I do decide to build the transfer copter now. It is on the field. Now, I decided to build it a little bit late just because I definitely wanted to get those tanks on the field first. Now, I thought it was vitally important to get those there. Okay, so 42, moving in his unit, starts capping the comm tower over here, sends his transport copter to go and land on the island with the additional comm tower. So it does look like he is going to be able to get two comm towers. Like, that's going to happen. Because I do not believe that I am able to interrupt this one without losing my tank. And this tank is not actually in position right now, so I decided to go hit that penguin right there. Alright, but we're going to see what I do. So, day 10. Double digits now. I begin to move into the center to attempt to take the properties. And I actually move in to take another shot at another penguin. Because I'm still safe. I'm still not actually in, in the danger zone yet. This tank is a little bit too far. This tank is a little bit too far. So, still the free shot. So, I decide to take it. Send a second tank over to the right. Don't even bother interrupting this cap because I know that if I do, I'm just going to get hit from a single. So, not, not a great move. Alright, so the rest of this turn, not really much happens. Now, go tank, artillery, and I buy a mech. So why do I buy a mech? It's like, aren't mechs bad? Yeah. Mechs are not actually super bad. Right? They're not super bad. Kind of good on this map, especially on your weak front. If you reinforce it with a couple mechs, uh, that, that weak friend can actually hold out for quite some time. Now, Adder mechs in particular are actually super effective because, believe it or not, plus one movement is 50% of the movements of this unit, right? So you're getting like a 50% <laughs> movement bonus just with side slip. So, mechs, good. Alrighty. 42 42. Finishes cap on the comm tower and the city, gets them both. Sitting at 18,000 now. Interrupts my cap over on the left hand side too. Recon moving in to interrupt my cap in the middle. Ah, terrible stuff. Terrible stuff. For me, not for him. Alright, so that's the end of his turn. So we managed to take a couple shots. We're sitting pretty even on the units right now. Um, yeah, so not really too much is happening. Now, I like the position of these two tanks here sitting on a city each. If you're going to move in and attack those, uh, you might not be able to completely take it out. Especially not with two con towers. Like, I believe this guy would actually survive with like 1 HP, maybe 2 HP. In which I would just get counterattacked by a tank and then, you know, bad things will happen. Not a great time indeed. Alrighty. So, don't bother even continuing the cap. I just take out the infantry. I'm just like, get out of here. I don't need you here. Leave me alone. Christ almighty. All right. And I also did build an artillery unit of my own the other turn. And I'm now sending that up. Build two more tanks and an infantry. Just sort of re-fortifying myself in the center. So sort of putting myself in a position where I might be able to just jolt my way ahead and get some damage done. Take a shot at that recon too. Alright, so now we are starting to get into dangerous territory right now where 4242's Jess now has 130% firepower with their vehicle units. Ouch! 
don't want to get hit by that. Ugh. That'd just be bad. Now, 130% firepower is no joke, folks. That is some powerful stuff. And you can see there just how powerful it is. Doesn't even care that I am on a city. He just rolls up and takes the shot at my tank. He's like, no, I'm not letting you set up here. I'm just going to go in and then I'm just going to roll you. And that's it. That's what he's trying to do. He's trying to just roll old Adder friend over here. All right. Three tanks over on the left-hand side of the map. Two from 42. Builds a battle copter. Builds an anti-air unit. An infantry. And another infantry. Now, preemptive anti-air for sure. I don't even have any air units on the field. I believe I was thinking about building some air units. But I wasn't there yet. Like, I don't think I was there yet. I might have been there yet. All right, now this is a very important turn because you can see over on my uh, old weak front over there, weak front, um, I am starting to take some damage. Yes, not good. So I'm considering my options. I'm like, okay, so he's got a bunch of units right here and he's got that artillery unit, which is extra pesky, extra annoying. Because if I attack into that line, I'm just going to get popped by an artillery. So it's like, what do I do? Do I step back and refortify my line and let him just push up? Or do I just uh, go complete full send city and just attack him? Well, some of you would probably not be very surprised by the answer because I am Mr. Ken, aka Send the Original Guy, and I am a... I am a proud owner of a ticket to Full Send City. So, decide to cap my properties. I was really hoping that I would have the comm tower for this attack, but I don't. So I go in and take an engagement, pop my side slip. I think you guys can see what might be happening here. Alrighty. So I move over. I actually decide to interrupt the cap with my weakened tank because attacking an 8 HP tank is not going to be very good. And in the event of that I lose this tank to, let's say, this artillery right here, I want to at least have one semi-okay tank in the area to uh, defend myself. I move in with that superior mech, powerful mech, and attack the tank. Bomb. Tons of damage. Destroy the 1 HP recon that was sitting there. And I move in with my two tanks right here. Taking out that tank that was on the city. And I move in my other infantry. Start capping one of his properties. Take out a 7 HP infantry. Just wipe it off the face of the planet. Take a shot at a tank. Move my other infantry in. So now I have a decent wall right here. A decent wall. It's looking okay, folks. Backed up by an artillery unit. Got it completely zoned out. It is looking dandy over there. Now, decide to actually move in, take a shot at the infantry instead of starting to cap that property. But I decide to move my other two tanks into the center too. Three tanks in the center now. So. I decide to build an anti-air to contend with the battle copter. Now the issue with building an anti-air to defend against a battle copter on this map, the battle copters have insane movement on this map. They can just front switch everywhere. They can go over there, they can go over here, they can go everywhere. They could even be under your bed right now, just waiting for you. Spooky stuff. Don't look under your bed, because it's probably a battle copter. There. Just warning you, okay? Watch out. Alrighty, so end my turn there, managed to get a quite a little bit of a difference right here. So we're sitting ahead by over 30k. So 42-42, does not let that bother him very much. Takes a shot at my mech though, which is interesting. Very interesting, I think. Yeah, very interesting. I'm not really too sure about that one. I feel like this would have been able to take out this tank completely, right? I 
and that would leave these two infantry in position to take out the enemy. And then that would also leave this infantry in position to take a shot at this one, doubling up an attack here, taking them both out. So I feel like this entire line could have fallen right there. But we're going to see what 42 decides to do here. Alrighty. So he leaves my tank alive and decides to take everything else out, pretty much around it. So, still not a bad move, but personally I feel like that would have been able to, to be done a little bit better. Just a little bit better, because I definitely know that this tank would have fallen, the mech would have fallen, and the infantry would have fallen uh, if we just went about that a little bit differently. Either way, still very effective, still got the job done. Now, you can also see that Mr. 42 has decided to join the Club of Extraordinary Gentlemen and build himself a medium tank. Classy. Classy gentlemen build medium things, folks. It's just the simple truth. You can't, uh, you can't deny it. You cannot deny it at all. All right, so now I need to figure out what I'm gonna do to uh, sort of get myself out of this situation because I did put myself in a sort of situation here. Now I'm a little bit ahead for sure, but I haven't really done too much damage over here. Did a little bit of damage, not too much. But I have like no reinforcements here, whereas 42's got some reinforcements on the front of that medium tank. So, with this looming threat of danger, I decided to pull a few of my units back. So you can see, getting my tank healed, moving back, and sort of securing some sort of a oddly shaped line. Oddly shaped but effective. Alrighty, and as you can see, I moved this tank back here, and now I have a huge, like, five tank army ready to go in to fight these infantry. So, and a mech. Ha! Gotta have the mechs in there. Gotta have Alright, decided to build a battlecopter. But, you know, battlecopter is, yeah, the, the mech was the real play. Gotta get the mech in. Now, 4242, he's getting super close to a an overdrive ability. Now, as we know, the overdrive is gonna greatly boost Jess's firepower and movement. Now, I believe, I might be wrong, but I believe Jess will get a 150% firepower. Maybe. I think it's 150%. Now it's 130 from the Super Co power and then with the Con Tower boost. So our units are gonna be very, very, very strong. Very strong. Not something you wanna be dealing with willy-nilly. Join some units together and actually get the full HP infantry in the center too. Pulls back the anti-air, moves the battlecopter and takes a shot at that infantry. Alright. So, spooky stuff. Alright, so I cap a city. Is because I am actually ahead in cities now. I have 21 to his 20. So, I have to do something with that while I have the chance, right? So I moved my infantry, or moved my infantry, I mean tanks is what I meant to say. I moved my tanks um, in a position where 42 is going to have to attack from the road. So, if he wants to come and attack me, he's got to attack me with no defense. Well, I guess he'll have, like, the 10% the defense from the co but that's about it. If he decides to push with that. Alright, reform my line a little bit, build some more artillery units. Like, three artillery on the field now, because now, if you look down, 42 base gift builds another medium tank. That's two medium tanks on the field. Now, I don't care how many tanks you have. If you're dealing with two Jess medium tanks with two comm towers, that is a dicey situation. I mean, that medium tank alone could at least take out three tanks. Powerful stuff. And they are moving in. 
Now, it takes a shot at my infantry here on the center property. Taking it out with a second infantry and taking more additional shots. Now I have very little infantry presence in the center and 42 moves in a fourth infantry. Possibly even a fifth. Well, we got a fourth at least. So now he's got four infantry in there that are like primed and ready to cap those mid properties. Getting a little bit spooked with that. What I'm also spooked about is the amount of units down here. Now, it doesn't really look like it, but he's got five fresh and powerful units that can move in and attack this. Now, to attacking into that line is a little bit suicide at this moment. But, if he did manage to kill this, and then use the medium tank to one-shot this one, and then use a tank to possibly either attack the AA or attack this guy here, it could be powerful. But we'll see what happens. Alright, so end of his turn, start of my turn. Thinking about some plays here, and I notice the amount of stuff in the middle, and I'm like, hmm. It's a little bit dicey. A little bit mm, cool. I'm gonna have to do something about that. So I shift around a couple of my units, attack one of the infantry in the middle, move one of my tanks over, take out an infantry, move a second infantry over there on the right hand side, build another tank, move my battlecopter in, because I can get a free shot at that infantry. Now I was thinking about attacking the tank, I was thinking about it, but I was like, hmm, you know what, he's just going to heal that tank up, and you know, that's just whatever, you know, it's like, injured tank is still going to go up and do some damage, it's like it's not going to stop. But, one less infantry over here. Well, that's one less piece of the puzzle. One less piece of the shield. So I felt like that was a pretty good idea. And it was free. You know, I just went ahead and took it. Build another artillery unit and another mech that I am funneling forward to the front lines with those little transport copters. You know, little fun guys, right? All right, so we have the overdrive. We have the overdrive ability right now. Just as super has been activated. Now, let's see what it does with it. Let's see what it does with it indeed. Now, I did notice that I made a little bit of a mistake over here. I mean, this position is actually quite weak right now. Um, and there was one thing that uh, I do quite often, unfortunately, that I have to try not to do, and that's place artilleries in a position like this. Now, mostly because if Jess actually manages to punch a hole in here and get like right here to attack one of the artilleries, these artilleries are not covering each other. So whatever goes in and attacks right there is going to take a free hit. And as you can see, bomb. Anti-air moves in and then bomb. There goes one of my artillery. There goes a tank. And there goes a second artillery. And that was definitely a mistake by my <laughs> myself here now unfortunately i did not account for that tank moving all the way up here and taking the shot at that artillery now i'm pretty sure that was max movement from this guy too one two three four five six well seven would have hit it seven eight into the forest so still took the hit ow painful you hate to see it but you love to do it all right so, yes, it does look like quite a bit of damage has been done. I am losing quite a few units. Unfortunate indeed. And then that Battlecopter moves in, but takes a shot at the mech instead of the, the tank, which I was kind of curious about. Now, obviously, you're going to do way more damage against the mech. But I don't know. I feel like I probably would have went for the tank. I don't know. You know, maybe the mech was a good shot. Alright, getting the boost out of the black boat. That's what I'm talking about, folks. Oh, and then that other tank moves all the way in. Takes a shot at my guy sitting on the HQ. Now, we can see that we are getting a lot of infantry, like, super close to that HQ, folks. Now, HQ. Capture. It's a real possibility on this map. I've managed to pull it off against other people before. Now, I haven't had it pulled off against me, but there's it's it's coming it's coming one day pretty sure it's gonna happen 
All right, so I reply to this with a side slip. So use a normal co-power. Now I am gonna be using my co-power into Jess's like 150% firepower right now, which is not really super great, but I need to do it because I need the movement right now. Because I'm using this side slip more as a way to get away from what's going on rather than actually do a lot of damage right now. Now I am intending to do a little bit of damage, but the other thing I'm intending to do is use that side slip to pop these two infantry right here. Now, I felt like this was super important because even if I lose these infantry right here, that will severely slow down any captures that happen down here, right? It's gonna take them like four days to cap these properties and in four days I can manage to reorganize my units and possibly head down there again to interrupt any caps or any push that he manages to do. But this side slip is definitely a runaway and hide side slip and do a little bit of damage to the HQ. Definitely securing that HQ. Now, I leave my artillery unit exposed and my anti-air exposed. I do realize that, so I'm expecting to lose at least minimum four, maybe five units this turn, which is not great. Not great indeed. But, you know, I managed to take out a lot of units at the exact same time. Yeah, as we can see, I'm clearing house in some of those infantry in the middle too. And I moved my Battlecopter all the way into the middle to run away from this anti-air. So now it's going to force this anti-air to come into the middle too. Strats. Get a little heal on it as well, a little refuel from the black boat. And I finally decide to build my a medium tank of my own because now 4242 has three medium tanks on the field. Out of another base skip though, strangely enough. Not sure if I truly agree with the base skip. I feel like maybe more small units at this point would be pretty good. However, we got a base skip and we got another medium tank on the field and I am literally shaking in my boots because now, as you can see, there is some attacks going on and it's not very good for your old friend, Mr. Ken. That's for sure. <laughs> Definitely losing a bit. And we can see 42 just moving in with his line to not giving up any ground. You know, securing his area. And now we got a whole bunch of stuff in the middle, too, that are just, like, just capping. They're just capping, man. It's like, oh, God. What are you going to do? I don't know. But move my ant or move my artillery unit right here so it is very effectively zoning out this little area right here. It's going to force the medium tank to actually move as well. All right, so now I decide to move some of my units back, taking a few shots. You know, I run away and then I come back and strike way harder because he also doesn't have his defense points too, right? So you run away, you come back, strike hard. You know, there's still a there's still a medium tank there. It's still doing, uh, it's still still threatening things. You know, I'm not uh, not feeling super good about that, but like, I do got my own medium tank now, so. If he decides to attack first, I am going to be able to counterattack with a medium tank on my own. Building a second medium tank, so now I have joined the double classy club. Unfortunately, 42 is actually a seat ahead of me in the triple classy club, but that's okay, you know? Maybe I'll get there eventually. Alright, 42 just uh, continuing the assault, though. Continuing the assault. Moves his tank down here. Which is kind of risky. Like, okay, so we, we, what do we, what do we, what do we attack? I can't remember. So we tax a tank with it. Oh yes. I don't really agree with that. I would have taken this medium tank way back here and like stayed far away from this medium tank. Because what this is doing is it's just offering up a medium tank to get first struck by another medium. tank. Which is not what you want to do with your medium tanks, folks. You want to keep them defended. You want to, you want to get a lot of damage with them. Okay. So now it's my turn here up top. So I do another side slip, getting that movement bonus. Side slipping right in there. And I actually take a shot at this tank from that was just built out of this property. And as we can see here. This, uh, this anti-air is way out of position. Cannot attack, and this one cannot attack it either. So this is a free shot. Free shot, folks. 
double artillery shot actually to back that up too. Moving down, take a shot at the medium tank from a city. Gonna get the heals afterwards. Second attack with the tank. Trying to move in, take it out with the mech. Does not work, my mech falls. Sad days. Salute to you, Mr. Mech, you tried your best. But your good friend, Mr. Infantry, comes in and finishes the job. You know, they were best friends in high school. They, they played football together. They both enlisted at the same time and sadly, that is how one of their stories ended, but it was not in vain. Not in vain, folks. All right, so I actually unload my infantry over here too because this uh, this threat of this anti-air moving up and attacking it, I didn't want that to happen. I do need some fresh infantry down here in order to start capping those properties. Because as we can see, uh, properties have been denied on both sides here. Right? Crazy stuff. Already day 18 and not all the properties have been secured. Now, I joined the triple medium tank classy club. And that's it. Just move my units over here. So now I'm getting ready to strike this little force down here. 42 moving in to cap that neutral property. Moves this tank up here. But are we going to defend the tank with something? Hmm. Doesn't look like we're going to defend the tank with anything. So we build a couple standard units. And, okay. So, not really sure what the plan is here. So this medium tank can't actually reach yet. But if I manage to get a side slip, it can reach. But I'm like 20,000 away. So, I want 28,000, but... 22,000, you know, I'm pretty, pretty far away. I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it this time. So let's see what I do. So, I re-secured the left-hand side here. Move a couple of my units forward. Think about going for this property here, but with that anti-air down here, you know, I'm just thinking it's not quite worth it yet. So, I decided to try to go for the neutral property instead. I'm thinking the neutral property is still pretty good. Now, okay, spoiler alert, sorry. Anyways, so I was sitting here after doing some of my movements and I was thinking about this turn here. And I was like, hmm, did I make a mistake? I made a mistake. So I'm thinking about this turn, right? And I'm looking here and I notice afterwards that if he actually gets the overdrive or even his normal co-power, we could actually send a bunch of these units in, completely break this line, and destroy these two artillery units. And I'm thinking to myself, well, that's not a very good idea. Not a very good idea. So, I decided to build a medium tank and a tank right here and right here, just to make sure that he doesn't decide to go and do that play. Right? Because I'm not 100% sure if I would be able to take out those units. I know this medium tank would be able to move in and possibly do some damage, but I'm just not sure, you know? So I just, I play it safe. Play it safe. Build units around the death ball. Alright. So he's starting to cap one of my properties, and I'm not really a huge fan of that. Builds a rocket, though. So, interesting build. Not really too big of a fan of rockets. Unless they're, like... Sturm rockets. I do love a good Sturm rocket, right? Uh, the mobility is really the issue, right? I mean, this, you know, we can only move right here right now, and then, like, not very far after that. But we're going to see if this rocket gets in play. Okay, so now I got him kind of, like, on the ropes a little bit. I got him, like, pushing back into the center. I've managed to secure this area. So I'm thinking that things are looking okay, and he actually moves this medium tank up closer, right? And it's in range of my medium tank, and I feel like he's kind of playing chicken with me, right? I'm, I think he's playing chicken with me. He's like, well, you can attack my medium tank, but I'm going to hit you back for like a lot of damage. And I'm like, hmm. bet. <laughs> All right. So I move some of my units and I'm just like, whatever, I got my ticket to full send city, folks. I'm already there. So I just move in with my medium tank and take the attack, right? 
And I move in with my other tank to take even more attacks. I'm just like, whatever, I'm just gonna do it. I just took the medium tank down to one HP. Mine's still sitting at seven. Yeah, you got an artillery here, you got a tank here, but you got nothing else, and I got all this stuff, so. I mean, are you gonna be able to push it? Or, I don't know, we'll see. So, refortify my line over by my HQ as well, build another medium tank, and that's it. I've, ooh, did I forget to move this medium tank? I might have forgot to move that medium tank. Ooh. Or maybe I kept it there. Oh yeah, okay, I don't know what I did. I was thinking that maybe he could overdrive right here and attack the medium tank first, so I actually kept it behind the black boat. Alright, so we got an overdrive. Now, he attacks with uh, the artillery unit before the overdrive, which is kind of unfortunate, because that would have been a one-shot right here. Would have been able to take out the tank with the overdrive. But he follows it up with, a, with an infantry attack anyway. So it is taken out. Moves in with the anti-air to take a shot at the artillery unit. So that's pretty good. You know, you move in there, swoosh in there, take the shot. And then goes in with my his medium tank. Boom, big hits right here. Big hits. Actually blocks the medium tank in. Not going to be able to attack this medium tank unless... Unless I base block myself, which is like... Kind of tough, kind of dicey, kind of risky to do right now. Because now he's starting to cap some properties too in the middle. And moving a bunch of his units over here. Sort of re-secure in the center. Moving, pushing forward a little bit more here. Because all my units are sitting in the back now, right? I haven't really had an opportunity to push them up. And if I did have an opportunity to push them up, I just didn't do it, right? So, side slip again. Got another side slip in the house. 42 is ahead in units right now. The values are pretty much the same. So, let's see what I managed to do here. Move in with my Battlecopter. Take a shot at that 2 HP one. Get a little tiny shot in with my artillery unit. Take out a tank sitting on a city. Very important kill. Very important kill. Alright, move my 8 HP tank over. Attempt to take out the, uh, the battle copter with my medium tank, but it did not work, unfortunately. Managed to survive. Now, completely shift over all my units that were by the HQ over. Into the center. Secure in that area. Building a battle copter. <clears throat> and I get a little heal on my uh, <laughs> my medium tank right there, right? So very important stuff right there. Build another mech. Mech show, folks. Gotta get the mechs on the field. Important stuff. Alright, so now the rocket is actually in position to do some damage here, too. As you can see, we got quite a bit of area zoned out with it. It is going to be able to attack that medium tank. So that's something I'm going to have to be aware of. Now, does a combined effort attack on my tank there, but unfortunately does not manage to completely take it out due to the defense bonus that I had. But he does have a nice little impressive line down here. You know, it doesn't really... It looks a little bit difficult to attack. However, it is very, very crunched up here, and he's letting out a lot of ground here. He loses his medium tank over here, which is actually in position to be struck by this medium tank. So I think this might have actually been a misplay, you know? But I'm not 100% sure. But he left the medium tank open, right? So, I mean, you see an me open medium tank, I mean, you gotta take the shot. And it's like, I thought about this shot, too. It's like, okay, so I see the medium tank, it's like... He doesn't have anything around to actually counter my hit, right? So if I moved right here, he would have been able to hit me with a battle copter. But not right here, so I take the shot from the north there. Looks safe, it looked cool. I could have actually finished it off with the tank too, but I decided to actually wall off the artillery instead. But now my position is actually putting a lot of pressure on his HQ. So that's gonna force him to actually have to respond. He's gonna have to move his units over to the thing. But he actually decides to move up and start attacking my HQ. Moves the rocket ahead too. Which is pretty neat. The rocket is now in a very good position. I thought the position before was good. Now it's in an even better position for zoning. However, it is sitting on a one... Or it's sitting on a shoal. So the shoals, you know, you don't really get too much... Uh, 
pretty much the fence out of there, right? So if I do manage to get a unit in there, it would do quite a bit of damage, especially with the, uh, the old calm tower bonus. Very good stuff. All right, so I pop a side slip. Pop in the side slip. Gotta get it. And I use a bunch of my units to do a clever little series of attacks over here up north to actually take out quite a few units and interrupt the cap. So, very good stuff. And my transfer copter is so low on fuel, and I'm like, you've been a good soldier. I'm going to give you a little refuel, a little top up, you know, so you stay around for a little bit. Because I like him. I like him. He's done, he's done good stuff. He's buried, like, a lot of mechs. It's been good. It's been good to me. This medium tank's been pretty good to me, too. He's actually moving up. Completely taking out that medium tank down there. Now, what I'm not a huge fan of is this Battlecopter that's right here. Move my anti-air units over to defend against this. Alright, so as we can see, I did just use power, so I am going to be having a little bit of a defense bonus here, which is very nice. 42 decides to take a shot at this infantry right here, doing 60% damage to it. Moves the Battlecopter back. then just a couple more a couple more attacks happen that's about it all right okay i'm just gonna go back here so this is a super important turn super important turn because as you can see it does look like you know 42 is fairly well defended down here he's got a lot of units down here that are still doing a lot of damage um he's trying to cap one of my cities up here but I'm thinking to myself, and I see this little clump of units here, and I'm thinking to myself, and I'm looking at it, and I'm like, I've been in this situation before, right? I've been pushed to the very, very edge, right? Pushed into positions that I don't really want to be in. And I've had people do this particular tactic to me, and it has sent me straight to the tilt factory. Straight to the tilt factory, and it made me so angry. Very, very, like, you know. Not saying it's not a good play, right? Not saying it's not a good play at all. Just tilt me, right? Tilt me at the time. Because I didn't see it. But I'll show you what it is right here. Right, so let me get to it. We know that this unit is a full, fresh, 100%. It's never seen combat, never been hit. So what I do is I actually move a bunch of my units, take a whole bunch of shots first, and then sacrifice two units. Now, why do I sacrifice those two units? To make sure that I slightly deplete this unit's HP. Slightly deplete it. Because now it's not at 100%. And I was thinking to myself, I was looking at the calculator, looking at the rolls, and this wasn't a 100% guarantee, right? It was somewhere around like 90 to 99%, something like that. So I'm like, well, I got to do some damage to it in order to take it out. And I take a luck roll, I take a gamble, manage to take it out. Now the rocket is completely exposed now. And with the two comm tower bonus, I managed to like one hit KO the rocket right there. Completely take it. And attack with my medium tank over here, giving me a side slip ability. And as we can see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Seven squares away. Move the anti air straight in there and take a shot. And then I don't attack down here because I still feel like it's a little bit risky. I don't wanna don't wanna get hit by that um, anti air unit yet. But I do send a bunch of my other units to the center. Now that I got this play, and then I joined the Gentleman's Club with a Neo Tank. Only gentlemen build Neo Tanks, folks. All right, now after that, 42 has resigned because the loss of that rocket, the uh, the Battlecopter and the tank there, it's a little bit too much to come back from. And as we can see, my unit count is very high compared and about double the value. 
So there's probably no coming back from that one right there. Now, I thought that was a super cool match because when I started seeing 42 pump out those medium tanks, right? He had like three medium tanks while I had nothing. No medium tanks. I know, right? It's like, Sammy, you always build medium tanks. But I didn't have any medium tanks. Didn't have any of them. So what I did was I built lots of indirect units and built some battlecopters and just positioned myself sort of away from those medium tanks. Now, however, if 42 didn't actually sort of miscalculate some of his movements with those medium tanks, it would have probably went a little bit differently because those medium tanks would have been able to do a lot of damage from him, right? Uh, just the fact that I managed to first strike so many of them, it's really just kind of what um, tilted the game in my favor, right? But that has nothing to do with 42 skill because I believe 42 is actually a, a very, very, very skilled player. Uh, definitely got some potential to get way, way up on the ladder, if you know what I mean. So congratulations to 42 for playing. I had a blast playing it. And I'm sure next time when we meet in Global League, you're probably going to stomp me because that's usually how it goes. But until next time, it was a good game, friend. Alrighty, so hopefully you all enjoyed watching that. Make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you're not already, because I appreciate it greatly, and that's about it. I just like every single one of you that do it. It's a fantastic thing. And you know it helps the channel, right? All right, link in the description below where you can join Advanced Wars by Web today and the Discord. You can play, chat with people around the world, and if you happen to have a replay that you want reviewed on the channel, please send me the replay link on Advanced Wars by Web. Send me a message on my character, Mr. Cannon, that is M-R period space C-A-N-N-O-N. -N -N. Send me the link and I will take a look at it. And if it looks super cool, you might be featured on the channel. Alrighty, and I think that covers everything. So hopefully you all have yourself a fantastic day and I will see you next time. Bye for now.